Hello, folks. Reverend Crystal Cox here. All right. So, whether it's the Mandela effect, whether it's what's going on in the world right now, which we're not allowed to talk about on YouTube, no matter what it is that's going on in your life, understand this. Understand what? I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> we. Okay. <clears throat> understand that you're creating your reality. All right, so we create our reality to a mass consciousness level. All right, so we can't say fly just yet because we've made an agreement through mass consciousness of certain levels. Okay, so every single thing that's going on in your life or in what looks like world events, these all come down to the way you're creating reality. Okay, emotions, belief, thoughts. The triad, the magic triad that creates reality. And this is your focus. This is what focuses you on the frequency that draws reality to you. Okay? It is literally magic the moment you take something in your life and it may seem negative to you. It may seem low vibration. You, you may be like, oh, I wish that would happen. If you can back up a little bit and see how it might serve you. It, right as it is, without any changes at all, how it might be of your highest and best good, um, how, you know, I, I like to say, well, it might, must not have been meant to be or it would be. Or maybe, you know, I did an hour-long video, it <laughs> happened the other day, and it just evaporated because I wasn't, it wasn't in my highest and best good to put that information out there. Or, you know, I at first I was kind of bummed. I was like, well, that's kind of weird. You know, I... And then I just let it go. You know, I'm, I love that analogy used to use back in the day of holding a rope with an elephant on the end, right? Like how long can you hold it, right? And it's just going to hurt and make your hands bloody and you just let go, right? Let go, let God, let go, let goddess, okay? Don't hold on to anything that doesn't want to be in your life. You're force, forcing creating reality. And so learning to create your own reality is the key to everything. So, uh, what people call the Mandela effect, switching timelines, you do it billions of times every minute based on your own thoughts and your own beliefs. Okay, so it's really important to, on the, on the road to living your preferred life and your highest and best life, it's really important to know what you believe so you know how you're creating reality. Otherwise, you're creating reality unconsciously because these things create your reality. Whether you like it or not, whether you participate or not. And if you don't participate, then it's your unconscious beliefs that create reality for you. Okay? Beliefs that you didn't know you had. Beliefs that were, you know, your uncles or in your DNA lineage line from thousands of years ago. Um, but you don't know if it's yours or not because it could just be something you picked up along the way, right? In any timeline, in any version of you, in your DNA, in school, teachers, parents, whatever. So in order to find out if it's actually your belief, you do this magical thing called co-counseling with yourself, right? You've got that voice going on in your head anyway, right? It could be berating you or bullying you, which, you know, your best friend in your mind shouldn't be doing. Uh, that's a program, you know, from, well, it's just not, uh, it's not of your highest and best good. So you have this inner dialogue and you go, okay, well, why, why do I feel bad about this? Um, what, either what must I believe or what do I believe? And sometimes when you can't get down to the belief, you just say, okay, well, what, what am I afraid of? What's the worst thing that could happen? What, what am I afraid of happening? And a lot of times that comes down to you're afraid of what other people are going to think or say, or they're going to laugh at you or think you're stupid. The thing is, is that there's always going to be someone to laugh at you. There's always going to be someone to think you're stupid. And so, um, I have that program because my dad used to always put me down and I, 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 I berate and bully myself in my mind. And then I go, well, wait a minute. Um, okay. So I'm stupid. Then what, what happens to me? Nothing, right? Who cares? Who cares if someone thinks you're stupid? Okay. You want to be your best self and you want everybody to like you. It's never going to happen. Okay. Um, it's just not a thing. 
there's just there's no way that everybody's going to agree with you. And everyone doesn't need to agree with you for you to create your own reality. You just have to agree with yourself, okay? You have to say, okay, yeah, I do believe that. And it's not about whether it's good or bad or you're a horrible person or you're the greatest person ever. It's about really identifying what it is that you actually do believe versus what other people have told you to believe. And sometimes it's really hard. That's a fine line uh, to figuring out what it is that we believe. But if you're feeling bad about something or you're worried about something, there's a belief. There's a program in the way of you living your preferred life, what you really want to be living. Okay, so another tip on that is to find it in your body. And I repeat these things to you because I repeat them to myself. And these are how we create reality. There's nothing more important than understanding how we create reality because there's no person, there's no job, there's no nothing out there that matters more than us walking our talk, right? Than our really literally creating our reality consciously because we actually change realities to different versions of those people of those buildings, of those jobs, of those areas. Our, if we believe something strong enough is a certain way, then that comes into our life that way, okay? Um, when we walk over and sit on a chair, we believe, and that belief moves into 100% knowing. We know that chair is gonna catch us, okay? Now, even the rickety ones, you know, when people fall on the floor, if a chair breaks, it really is a surprise because they actually know that chair is gonna catch them, okay? so. When you fine tune your beliefs into knowings, you shift to react, you shift realities immediately and you shift to people who are, you're lucky, right? People are always nice to you. People are always helpful. Um, the things that you want in your world start to appear everywhere and more and more. And it's kind of a, um, I think Bashar talks about it being a gradient, but basically it's like, if you, you can, I work with some people on, they could believe that they could find a hundred dollar bill. But they can't believe they could find a briefcase full of a million dollars. They can't believe that this would happen, but they can believe that that. And usually it's it's less than it's, uh, um, it's self-esteem. It's all kinds of things. So we work with where they're at and what it is that they can believe, okay, that, that might happen to them. And so um, you, you kind of have to build a bridge. So shifting from... Um, I'm trying to word this, but we'll just say it how it is from laying in the gutter, you know, penniless to being a billionaire. Okay. That shift is too big. And it's not about the money. It's about the frequency of your self-worth of your belief in how the system works, how money works, how finance works, your belief of how it works. So you can't just jump. You have to go in, in levels of frequency. So every time you raise your frequency, you move more and more towards the preferred you. Okay. And you do that by every moment following your highest excitement. People are always asking for a sign. God, show me a sign. Jesus, show me a sign. St. Germain, my, my higher self, show me a sign. Your excitement is the sign. Okay. That's what lets you know which choice is of your highest and best good. A lot of the mainstream religions will teach you not to, fo to follow the path of most resistance because that's where God is. That's not where God is. Your creator God. Follow the path of least resistance. Okay? Be your authentic self. The more you are your authentic self and you make a choices from that authentic self, the more you create the reality that you prefer. It draws to you. It manifests in front of you. It literally shifts and changes things around you physically. It's an actual literal thing. Okay. So every single choice, every single <clears throat> moment you have a choice. Okay. There is, there's a choice between doing one or several things. And one of them is the most exciting choice. One of them feels better to you. Okay. Whether you admit it or not. Okay. We say, oh, we should do this. Or I would rather do that. That feels best, but I got to do this. I'm supposed to do this. What if every time you chose what was your most highest and best self through your excitement with integrity. Of course, you don't, you don't run over other people's rights for that intake, you know, because it's my highest and it's my, it makes me happy to just push you out of the way and just take all your stuff. Um, it's with integrity. That's how we create reality. Okay. What we hundred percent believe will happen. That's, we move more and more into that belief. Okay. And another way to, to dissolve old beliefs in your body is when you, you're feeling bad about something, you look at it in your body. Okay. Just look at it. 
it'll feel something somewhere. You'll, you'll feel a lot of times for me, it's in my solar plexus, sometimes my heart. And I just look at it. No words, like listen to a fan or something. Don't put any story to it. Just watch where it is in your body and it'll kind of melt. Sometimes it moves to other places. Okay. And don't put a story to it. And they say in a lot of these videos, you know, the thoughts can come in, but you don't have to feed them. Okay. Your focus is your magic wand. And, and I talk about that, you know, a bird can land on the net on the porch, but you don't need to let it build a nest. So yeah, thoughts might come in randomly, but you don't need to feed them. Okay. The more you feed them, the more you create that as your reality. It's, you'd think it would be an easy concept to grasp to follow your highest excitement. Oh, let's just do what's fun, but it's not because we have guilt. We have shame. We have our parents and other authorities in our head. We have programs from other lifetimes. We have programs in our DNA and we simply don't allow ourselves to be the happiest version of ourselves because we put woulda, coulda, should on it, you know, and we're constantly projecting into the future. Well, I'm going to do this today so I can create that in the future, or I'm this way now because of something that happened in the past, but actually we're quantum. We, in this moment, we create the past. Okay. You, you don't need to say, Oh, well, you know, my family did it this way, or I grew up doing it this way, or I do ask yourself in this moment, do you believe this way is good right now? Do you believe this way, whatever it is you're talking about or thinking about is something that you believe in right now? Because you don't have to say, oh, I believe in it now at 40, 50, 60 years old, 30 years old, 20, whatever the hecksters you are. I believe in it because my grandpappy did or because, oh, I just raised that way. I can't change it. You're time traveling, right? You're bringing the past in or you're using some sort of justification to cover up what it is you feel now blaming other people. You ask yourself, do I believe that? And so, and you go, yeah, okay. Then you're consciously creating reality. But if you don't examine whether you believe it or not, then it's just put upon you. Then you're not consciously creating reality, but you're still creating reality. You're just doing it unconsciously. So it is very important for you to be your authentic self in every moment. Okay. The world is a little bit messy now. Let's just say that because we can't, um, you know, um, oh, by the way, on that, I'll put another link. <laughs> probably, or you can just Google Reverend Crystal Cox on Rumble. I will be talking about that stuff over there. I know I keep saying that and I keep posting here, but people are here, <laughs> even though, and YouTube's like, oh, join us, buy our YouTube TV, do this, do that. I'm like, what? Wiped out. They wiped out decades and de de couple decades of my work, hundreds of videos. Okay. Facebook wiped out um, 15 years of photos and work and projects. Okay. And then they're like, pay me, advertise with me. Right. <clears throat> that was a bit of a tangent and not of my highest excitement. All right. So we're constantly in every moment, regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of who says something to us, that just the bizarrest thing, right? Um, if you want to engage with them or fight with them or prove them wrong, um, instead, how about just live your truth? Okay. Unless you honestly believe that you're going to convince them of your way. Okay. There, there's just no sense in it right now. The information's out there and it's so surprising to me how, you know, two people can read the same exact information and interpret it so wildly different, but that's the same thing as how frequency works, right? You're standing right next to someone. They're tuned into the rock station. You're turned into the classical station. You're both literally hearing something different. You're both experiencing a different version of reality right next to each other. And that is based on frequency. I have a book called Frequency. Where is that? I also have the book called The Field with Lynn Taggart. Your bio field. Okay. Every choice, every decision, every belief creates a frequency in your energy field. And that's what attracts or repels reality to you and attracts and repels versions of you. It is so powerful to speak the truth. Even if it hurts, it hurts in your body. You find where it's at in your body. You look at it, you dissolve it. You just love yourself. But when you speak the truth, your truth, okay, no matter how much it hurts you or how weird or awkward it is, you can trust that the resulting reality will be a reality that you really prefer. Okay. And sometimes things have to leave your reality for other things to be created. But if you're not being honest with yourself, you're never going to have a reality you prefer. 
Okay, so we do this gently every moment of every day. We choose the most exciting choice between whatever's available within integrity, meaning we live and let live. We don't run over other people's rights to do it. And we move level by level towards what we actually prefer. Okay, because sometimes we've been living a belief so long that someone else's that when we identify it, we forget. We're in a groove and we're like, oh, I should do this. I should do this. I we're in New Earth energy now, and it's not about should do anything. Okay, you can create money aligned with your highest purpose now. Okay, you can create abundance in ways that are nothing to do with man-made money. Okay, you, what you believe is literally what you draw to you. And I, I can't stress this enough. I, I teach this to people every day and help people to logically unwind their beliefs. I don't put up on them what my beliefs are, say you should believe this or you should believe that. I encourage them to find out their beliefs and to live the life of the power of one. We call our ministry the ministry of the one. The one is you, the individual, the individual creator God, okay? You are quantum. You are creating your reality in every moment based on your beliefs. Like if you go, oh, you know, this hurts or that hurts because this happened 20 years ago or whatever. Do you believe it always has to hurt? Do you believe that there's a cure? Do you believe in the power of the living God, which is in every single moment creating the reality that you prefer or the reality that you don't prefer based on your own beliefs? That is the living God. Okay, brother Jesus came here to teach you who you are and how to create reality okay isn't it funny it's still talking about you are born in sin right but yet jesus died for your sins how do those two things be in the same room the same thought pattern you know it all of the things that Jesus came here to do or not to do is so muddled now. What do you believe? Okay, what feels good to you? Okay, I believe that Jesus came here to teach us who we are and how to create reality. And the narrative was stolen and twisted and run amok, right? Okay, the power of the living God is in every moment. You following your highest excitement to draw to you the life that you prefer, okay? That's all there is. Sounds simple, it is simple, it's a simple formula. Easy to do, no way, because we have a mountain of programs. We have everything our mother ever said, and if these to toxic people are still in our lives poisoning us, we're never free from them to even figure out what it is we like without, oh my gosh, they're gonna be mad, they're gonna be upset, they're gonna be upset. And it's so funny to me how people, like, they don't, like, for example, their mother, they'll be like, well, we don't believe the same. She doesn't believe in, in, in the same that, that I do. Um, this is just an example on, on metaphysics, on healing, on um, world use. She doesn't believe the same as you on anything and berates you and, and is always picking people over you. And she's got this whole thing going on, but you're still seeking her approval. It's so funny how we seek the approval of those people we don't like, respect, agree with, or prefer to be in our life. Okay, then you identify your belief with that. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to get in trouble. Well, do I really believe that? What kind of trouble? A fine? Who cares? Jail? Who cares? That must be where spirit wants you. Death? Well, then maybe spirit wants you dead. Okay? There's no such thing as death anyway. You just wake up somewhere else. Okay? So what is it that's so bad that this person can do to you if you don't please them. And even if you please them in that moment, they're going to keep changing the goalposts, as they say, right? You're never going to be able to please them. And that's because they're never pleasing themselves. They're not happy. They need to micromanage you and you let them. I guarantee you, you cut them out of your life. Your life will get better and better and better. First, you have to remove the poison, which is these people. Or, or whatever environment you're in that you don't prefer that you keep making yourself be in, remove the poison and then heal from it and constantly picking at your preferred reality every moment, making sure that you know that your focus is an amazing gift. It is your magic wand to create reality wherever you give your attention to. That's the version of reality you create. You put your vote in to create to mass consciousness and you create on a personal level. Okay, it is extremely important in, in, in your pursuit of happiness and joy and to get away from depression and anxiety and fear and worry of all these things that try to get you worried, you know, whether it be money or bills or you got to be this way, you got to take this, or you got, and it's really, really hyper 
hypersized right now, right? It's so important that you know your mind, you know what you believe, don't doubt what you believe. And I'm not saying don't have, what do they call it, intellectual intelligence, where you get new information and you reassess what you believe. Great. But I'm talking about the beliefs that we're running on all the time that are either ours or aren't ours that create reality. And when you get, like, sometimes people get upset about something, they're like, well, no, this is that way and this is that way. But, oh, is that what you believe? No, that's what I know. That's a fact, right? There's no such thing as facts, right? It's this one main thing that the Mandela effect teaches you, which is actually a quantum effect, is that there's no facts. It's all subjective perspective. Okay, there's your reality and there's my reality. I didn't think that that was a thing. I didn't think I could actually literally live and experience two different versions of reality with different people in it, different colors of the sun, different physical changes across so many. I had no idea, right? And then once I learned that I could do that in 2016, then I focused every part of me on being the highest and best version of myself, okay? Just let go of everything worldly and dive into every program and every trigger, okay? Um, and, and it takes a long, long time to strip all of the old away. And then you're in the void and then you feel lost and depressed and alone because you're like, oh my God, I'm in the void. But really it's like the Etch-a-Sketch, right? You just shook it and it's clear. And then what you bring into focus is based on your choice. And don't let things come back into focus after that time to that you don't prefer, even if it hurts, even if people come in and they're like, well, you know, you should talk to me and I'm your relative and I should know you and you should just, you know, let me run over you and do whatever I want to you and just still love me and have me in your life, right? They're going to keep tempt you. But when you go, no, I believe that I don't need, want, prefer, and I'm not going to have people in my life that are cruel to me, that say cruel things to me, that are not kind to me, and that don't believe the same as me on the really big things that really matter on a big level. Okay. And we're in that kind of environment now. And so every single belief, every single choice in every moment creates more of that in a huge ma magnitude of every choice you make. So choose, I don't care if it's dinner, I don't care if it's turning right or left, when to go to bed, what movie to watch, what you're going to do, what is the highest excitement for you personally in that moment. And choosing that is how you move towards the reality that you actually prefer to be living. Okay. Email me, reverendcrystalcox at gmail.com if you have any questions about any of this stuff. And I just hope you have a great motherfucking day, okay? And I, I love you, and I know that my words are vibrating out there on a higher frequency and assisting not only those who hear them, but in, in the wires and the internet and just the ethers to raise the consciousness that every single person be able to identify who they are and what their own preferences are and choose to live the life that they really do prefer to live. God bless you. Bye for now.